Hello theater students. Today we're going to learn parts of a stage. Um, when you look at a stage, this is going to be the very back of the stage and up here is going to be the audience. And so as you look at a picture, if it goes like this, that means it's getting further away. And so um, if we're looking and we're at the front of the stage closest to the audience, that is really going to be called downstage. And um, we are going to use initials for uh, marking off the different parts of the stage. Um, the back part of the stage is going to be called upstage. The reason it's called upstage and this is downstage is because back in Shakespeare's days when they did not have microphones and they needed to project to the audience, they actually tilted the stage slightly so that um, there would be an upward part of the stage so the sound would bounce and go forward towards the audience. Um, the front part of the stage would be just slightly lower and so you'd be able to see everyone on the stage and um, the sound would project towards them. And so if you're standing as an actor on the stage, this would be the right side of the stage and this side would be the left side of the stage. Even though from an audience's point of view, you're looking at the left side, this is actually stage right because as an actor when you're standing on the stage, um, this is stage right. So we're going to label this as SR or stage right. On this side, we're going to label it as SL or stage left. Again, we were saying that this is downstage, so this is going to be DL for downstage left, DR for downstage right, and then the very middle of our stage, this is called center stage, CS. So I would like for you guys to be drawing a stage and labeling it just like mine and then also um, telling me what the abbreviations stand for. So again, this is stage right, stage left, center stage, this is down stage right, and this is down stage left. So then this would be down stage center. So because this is the center part of the stage, we have center stage right and center stage left. Because remember in the back that would be the upstage part because it slanted upward and looked forward at the audience. This would be considered upstage right. This is upstage center. and upstage left. So now that we have all the abbreviations labeled and hopefully you've drawn your stage and labeled it too, I'm going to show you all the other parts that are behind the stage and in front of the stage. So now I'm going to redraw the stage. and label all the parts, stage right, stage left, center stage, center stage right, center stage left, down stage right, down stage center, down stage left, up stage right, up stage center, and up stage left. We're going to write what all those abbreviations stand for. So stage right, that's stage right, SL is stage left. CS is center stage. CR is center stage right. CL is center stage 
left, dr is down stage right, dc is down stage center, dl is down stage left, UR is up stage right, UC is up stage center, and UL is up stage left. So pause this if you need to write down what all the abbreviations stand for. So here's our stage again. Off to the sides where you can't see, these are called the wings. There are pulleys on the sides, and usually they are connected to um, either lights that are hanging down, or we might have um, a backdrop that comes down so that you have scenery that's here, that's called the fly system. Then we've got uh, the curtain that comes back and stays on the sides when, when it opens. And these spots right here are called the smoke pockets. Smoke pockets with the curtains fold into the corners of the stage. There's um, a space between the back curtain, usually the back curtain is a black curtain, and then usually the front one's yellow or red. The, the black curtain that's in the very back of the stage um, is usually about a foot or two away from like a cement brick wall. And so there's a space there, and that's called the crossover. So when you have actors that might be acting here and then they walk off stage right into the wings and then the next time they're supposed to enter, they're supposed to enter from stage left, how are they going to get over to stage left without the audience seeing them? They'll walk behind that black curtain in the back and be in front of the cement wall and that's the crossover. So they'll just walk behind the back curtain and over to here. So that's called the crossover. Sometimes there might be a trap door on the floor where you can cross back and forth that way. The line that goes across right here is called the proscenium. That's spelled P-R-O-S-C-E-N-I-U-M. And we have the proscenium arch. Which is the space in front of where the curtain closes. Usually there's a uh, space on the stage that you can still stand when the curtain is closed out front. So that's the proscenium arch. In front of that is an orchestra pit. Sometimes orchestra pits are actually four or five feet lower than the floor of the auditorium and the orchestra sits down in there and will perform during a musical. Out in front of that, there's always carpet before that first row. And this carpet area is called the apron. Then the 
rows will start out small in the front and they get wider as they go back and the rows will also gradually go up the hill so that you can see over the people that are sitting in front of you and so um, as those rows go higher and get wider it makes what looks like a rake and this is called the rake In the back of the auditorium, there's usually uh, people up in a spot where there's a window, and that's a sound and light booth. That's where they control the microphones and the music and the loudness and all the different lights and dimming them and bringing up the next set, uh, maybe putting on a spotlight on somebody. So they'll do that up in a booth in the back of the auditorium where they can see all the actors well. So outside of the auditorium, there's going to be um, the box office. And that's going to be the ticket booth, box office. So that's where they sell the tickets. Um, you can call the box office and reserve tickets. That's where they will make uh, posters to hang up to advertise for um, the show that's going on. Um, outside, there's the lobby where people will stand before the doors open and, and they are allowed to go in. Back to um, when people walk off the stage and, and go into the wings, sometimes they'll go out the door and they will hang out in a room if they only are in the very beginning of the play, the very end of the play, and they have like a half an hour to wait, and it's not just a couple minutes to wait, they'll go into what's called the green room. They will wait for a, somebody to call and say that they have a few minutes before um, it's their time to enter back on. And there, there'll be couches, um, maybe some food, and then you just hang out and relax until it's their time to come back on. Also right here is where the stage manager usually stands, right behind the curtain, and that's called the prompt corner, P-R-O-M-P-T, prompt corner. So the prompt corner is where the stage manager, they usually have on like a headset, and then they can talk to the people on the sound and light and be like, uh, we don't hear the uh, microphone number four, please turn it up a little bit, or um, we need uh, more lighting on this person, or um, you know, we need an usher down front, somebody, you know, the baby's crying, tell them to take the baby out. So the stage manager controls the whole play. Um, they might be calling back to the green room and saying it's time for um, these people to come back out, it's almost their turn. So the stage manager works everything. Um, and then we also have outside the building is a sign, and that's called the marquee. And a marquee is, um, you see marquees all over the place. You'll see them at restaurants, at churches. It has the sign that'll say like, um, if it's a restaurant, maybe it'll say Big Macs at McDonald's for 99 cents. So they're advertising what's happening at a church and saying their church service hours. Um, for the marquee that would be outside of the theater, it would say what play they're putting on, at what time and date, and maybe even the price. And so that way people will know to come and get their tickets and arrive at the show at the right time. So now we're going to talk about different kinds of theaters that exist and stages. So, so now we're talking about so now we're talking about different types of theaters. So the one we just learned about was the proscenium theater. And one thing I forgot to mention was that there's also usually dressing rooms behind the stage 
um, where people can uh, make quick changes and also sometimes in professional theaters they're going to have um, a room for each of the main parts and then a big room for all the like townspeople and background parts um, so those would be the dressing rooms behind there and then with the arch and the rake this would be a typical prosthetium theater The next one can be a, an arena, an arena or a stadium. So when you've got a stadium and you've got rows of people going up like this, and it's wherever you look, there are people in any direction, that means that the actors or performers, it's a concert, they are always going to have their back to somebody. So while they're performing, they want to look this way, and then they want to look this way, so that way these people aren't always looking at their back. So this would be called an arena or stadium. That's what this kind of theater is. Maybe you would put another circle around the whole thing. So that would be the arena stadium one. This was a typical theater, kind of like Chancellor High School's theater that we, we uh, are used to. The theater has a part that kind of comes out like this. And you'll see um, that the actors, kind of like on The Voice or American Idol, they'll come out and they'll get right down in front. And there, there'll be people standing here that can be right up at the stage, and um, they, they, it elongates out into the audience, so they can see that actor, and um, they can get right down into the, to the audience almost. So this one's called the traverse, or thrust. Traverse or thrust auditorium. Theater. Traverse or thrust theater. Where it comes out, elongates, and they can get um, all the way around. They're surrounded by the audience. We have the theater in the round, and that's kind of when we have a stage like this, and then there are people here, and there are people here. And so they always have their back to somebody. Um, I think a great example is when you're at Bush Gardens and you're in the German area, they have a stage there and um, they have picnic tables that sit here and people can eat and watch the show. There's also picnic tables on this side of the stage that they can eat and watch the show. So they usually have some actors that are facing these people and then you have some actors that are over here on this side of the stage that are facing those people and then they'll switch spots so that um, it keeps it entertained and not just focused on one person all the time in the show. And this this type of an auditorium or theater is called the theater in the round. Theater in the round because it's like round and everybody's on all the sides. And then the last one, I'm not even going to draw really, I mean it's kind of like um, if we go next door to the high school, they have kind of a black box uh, setting. And a black box theater is where you have like a stage that might be made out of platforms. And then you can have chairs that you can just set up wherever you want to um, to watch the show. And so it's a very basic theater because you can change the chairs however you want them to be. You can put them in a semicircle to watch the show, or you can make them in rows. Um, the platform could be extended and longer or made up higher. Um, so it's just a very basic theater so that um, it usually it's used for children's theater so that the children can come in and kind of watch all the way around. So that's a black box theater. It's a basic one.